Simon, welcome. Part eight. Jib the Vampire Bargo. Quick recap. Jib meets meets English guy in Thailand. Jib's Thai. Gets married, moves to the UK. She's pregnant, has a baby girl, Pla. Splits up. Goes and starts selling body, living in a room above a cafe, going off with a tribe of other girls to Europe, selling their body, trips to Thailand, buying gold, coming over and selling it for profits. This has gone on for a while. Now she's got a new victim. She doesn't like the cafe living there. She's found a young boy, John. Works in Tesco's night shifts. John's got an elderly, frail mother. She has her own house. The mother, she's got money in the bank and savings. Jib has slowly found out that John has access to all this. He maintains all the mother's finances, takes care of the mother. Jib and John, Jib and John, <laughs> I had a tweet, Jib and John, are living in a flat, rented flat that John is paying for. Little flat, but okay. Gets Jib away from the cafe. Jib is still selling her body on nights and going away for Europe weekends, etc. She's now realising there's quite a bit of money here in John's elderly mother, no other family. She's wondering if there's an opportunity for her. Over the next month or two, she gets closer to the mother, starts helping with John with the caring. She's a brilliant girlfriend to John. She's given him everything man could dream of. Perfect girlfriend. Hmm. As I said a couple of months gone by, Peter, the ex-husband, rings and rings. Eventually she answers the phone and Peter's on the phone saying to Jib, I want to adopt our daughter properly. I want to give her um, a settled future. I want you out of our lives, I want a divorce, I'm going to offer you a settlement now through the lawyers, if you take it then I'll get my daughter adopted, you won't have access, you'll get some money, it'll all be over and finished and divorced. If you say no to this request then we're going to leave the divorce and I'm not going to divorce you and I'm going to change things at my end so you can't have any money from the house and the marriage and I'll stop you any way I can. Now as soon as a threat comes over the phone from Peter, Jib is, oh, stands back, thinks about it. She says to Peter, I will meet you for a coffee so and so place tomorrow at this time she delays it because she needs to go to the tribe and talk so Peter arranges with her next day coffee lunchtime phone down jib that evening off to work calls a tribe meeting <laughs> tells them the score and the tribe the delegation talk about it it could be a bluff if she leaves it and goes through the courts, it's going to cost her money to get a divorce. There's no guarantee because she's dropped the maintenance, she hasn't seen the daughter, and the fact that Peter had the house before they married, blah, 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 she might not get much money. So if the offer's good enough and she's happy with that amount, then she should take it. That's all she needs to know. Next day, She tells John, I've got a meeting with ex-husband about my daughter, money, house, etc. John's fine. She says to John, I don't think it's good you come in. Better I go on my own. And he's, yeah, but well, whatever. <laughs> he don't care. He's playing on his PlayStation. <laughs> she goes to the meeting. Gets to the meeting. Sits down. Gets a coffee. Just her and Peter. No daughter. Clara's not there. Peter puts a piece of paper on the table from the lawyers. 
it's a contract of agreeing for the divorce, that she won't uh, make a problem in the courts, that she will take a financial settlement, and she gives full rights over to the daughter. She'll have to take this paper to her a lawyer, get him to do it through the lawyers. The offer is £25,000. And Peter says to her, that's all the spare money I've got. If you say no, there will be, you will never get any money out of me. I will make sure of it. £25,000. It's a lot. She could maybe get more if she pushed and pushed and pushed, but she's thinking this is easy money. She says to him, she hasn't got a lawyer, she says, how can I get this quickly and we get it done? He said, you can go to my lawyers and there'll be a lawyer, other lawyers in the same building, they'll do it. She says, arrange it quickly, we'll do it. And Peter says, you don't want to see your daughter? She says, you'll take care of that, she'll be fine. He says, okay, I'll ring you. That's it, up she gets, boom, gone. A couple of days later, gets the phone call. Peter's lawyers come in. She goes in, she meets another lawyer, explains, he explains what's happening, what she's signing away. She agrees, she signs all the paperwork, giving full rights to the daughter, to Peter, so he can now move forward, adopt her properly, and even though he's on the birth certificate in Thailand, it's still got to go through the process. Gets it all signed, all rights wavered that she can't make any claims, full consent, everything. The lawyer hands her a cheque in her name for £25,000. There and then. There it is. Done. We'll now put the divorce through the courts. Here's the paperwork. You've, you've already got it ready. Sign this, this and this. She signs it. I said the courts will be in touch. You'll get a copy. I'll ring you and let you know over the next six months how it goes. Fine. Stands up. Check £25,000. Off she goes. Straight to the bank. Hmm, put it straight in the bank. No more maintenance, no nothings. He's wavered the maintenance, so she's got nothing to pay. She got away without paying the maintenance. Very lucky. Should have paid till the plow was 19. Ah, she got away with that one. Off to a bank, put some money in. She's now got 25,000 in the bank. And immediately she starts off to her local Western Union, starting to send it. But it'll take a few days to clear, but she's still sending money. And over the next couple of months, all the money is sent. And the divorce, the first part comes through. A couple of months later, the final will come through. And she will find herself divorced in a few months. End of Peter and Pla in this story. They're now gone and out the way. She's 25 grand better off. Nice. And she still had the 500,000 baht, which is 10,000 pound for the sin sod. Huh, she's done well. Now it's time for her to start the next plot. She's taking care of John's mother more and more. And she's saying to John that she wants a bigger apartment, a small house. The apartment's not big enough. And he earns a bit more money than they pay out. She'll help with the food, she says. She mentions to John that she's had £25,000 from her ex. And yet John doesn't question why she doesn't put it into them buying a place. She just passes, just in a passing conversation, says she sent it home for her family to help them. And he's accepted it. You've got 25 grand. He's gone. Sorry. I want you to get a bigger apartment or house now. Let's get a house. Rent a house. More money. More of your wages will be gone. But your mum's got money. She'll help you if you need it. Yeah, he falls for it. What does he do? They upgrade. So they've gone from a flat that's maybe uh, 500 pounds a month. So, what, 600 dollars, American dollars a month. And he's gone up to a two-bedroom house, semi, only attached one side to a house. 
battery run again. So they're moving up to a two bedroom semi house and it's costing them seven, seven fifty a month. So that's about eight hundred and fifty dollars American dollars. He probably only earns a thousand pound a month take home. So he's getting close to his, his limit. But it's an upgrade. The tribe see it. It's showing face, gaming face. Better accommodation, she's doing well. She's got a young fella, toy boy, better house. They sort that out and they're in, moved pretty quickly. Now she's starting to spend more time with her mother. She's starting to say to Tom, I think you need to work more hours to earn more money. How about I start, take, I start taking care of your mother more and helping you out? We got on really well. And John, I call him Tom, John, John is, yeah, that's a great idea. I can earn some more money and it'll be good and maybe I can get promotion. It gives me a break from mum and she loves you. Okay. And Jib says, can I have the ATM card so I can, you know, have you got two? Can we make two? Um, so I can get the money out of her account to go and get food and things. And John's like, <coughs> yeah, just have mine, it's no problem. Hmm, she's got the ATM card from John's mother in her hands. And she does, she takes a bit of money out and she starts caring for John's mother in a really good way. She's, she, she is doing a good job as well as working, making money, going away for weekends, all the rest of it. But why is she working? What's she up to? What's she up to? Well, she doesn't do things in a rush. She thinks about it and she thinks about it and she plans and plots. She's a slow burning vampire. Hmm. Indeed. John's at work. She gets onto his computer. Like so many of us, your computer saves all your passwords and you just open the program, the password's there, you click, click, click. She's into his computer. But he's also got a book on the side. All his passwords are in there. In the book. Hmm. So, in she goes to John's mother's bank account to start snooping around and working numbers out. Where did she learn to be such a good mathematician, accountant? I don't know. It's the tribe, it's got to be. <laughs> Did you do more than an English lessons for those two years? <laughs> anyway, she peruses John's mother's bank accounts. Uh, I think we're going to leave it there. A little bit of a cliffhanger. You're already guessing that she's going to take all the money, isn't she? Or is she? How can she? How can she get away with that? Surely that would be fraud. No. She couldn't get away with that. No possible way. Hmm. Okay. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.